Hey, everybody. Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Let me tell you about my friends at Naked Vine, located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri, serving up all your favorite wine, whiskey, and local craft beers. Stop by and visit them this week for some great live music on Tuesday, December 11th. I'll be over there with my singer-songwriter storytelling showcase, 7 to 9 Five dollar cover at the door, bringing along my friends Langan Newbacher, Devin Cahill, Irene Allen, and Jeremy Essig for that show. Uh, gonna be a great time, excited about that. And Thursday, December 13th, Bell and Carson from the Scandaleros. Friday, December 14th, John Bonham and Friends. And Saturday, December 15th, Brian Curran and Greg Silsby. Find all this information and more at NakedVine.net. Be sure to follow along with them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Um, a podcast is kind of like a... It's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on It's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. <laughs> uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh it sounds like this. What's up, y'all? This is Al Holiday, and y'all listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast, y'all. Hey, everybody. Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Hanging out tonight with uh, three Pete guest, <laughs> Al Holiday. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the show, my friend. Hey, man. This is uh this is, yeah because man this is exciting like the already the uh the, your third appearance on here this is uh and then uh, we were just I was just saying it's been uh it's been a bit and we got a whole lot to catch up on mm-hmm. um so I'm excited that uh, you took took time to hang in here and tell me about uh, your big year man 2018 has been a really good year for Al Holiday and the yeah, Side Rhythm Band yeah dude thanks so much Shane and and thanks for everybody out there listening. Uh, 2018 has been really great, man, and I'm looking forward to next year as well. Yeah, well, let's, uh, we, so, we, yeah, I mean, kind of, let, let's give them a quick glimpse. We did, uh, you did a uh, Whitaker Music Festival this oh, summer. Yeah. Yep. Then we threw a re- release party for the brand new record. Yep. Headed on over to Europe. Yep. Did a big home welcoming party uh, yep. last week. Uh, you know, like this, just a glimpse of what, you know, um, but uh, a lot of things happening for the uh, the band this year, so we're going to get into all that kind of stuff, and then uh, we got a whole lot of other stuff to talk about too. But uh, let's talk about this record, forty nine sixty three, available now on vinyl, CD, and digitally everywhere. Um, but uh, this is uh, one. I mean, I, I've been following you guys for a long time. I'm a big fan, but I love this record, and I think uh, the the part that amazes me the most is that uh, how much you, you know, you and the band did, you know, all of it, like, on your own right here, right? Yep, yep, it's the, you know, if, for those of you keeping score at home, the name of the record is 4963, and that's my house number. <laughs> that's where we cut this record, is where I live, um, why I have a, a, a I, I have a, a basement workspace, and as far as South City basements go, it's, probably the best basement in all south city it's i'm I'm six foot three shane you're about the same height we can all stand up in the basement so (laughs) we are living a life of luxury over here um we um it's been our it's been our workspace and um we cut this entire record here we mixed it here um it was a group effort it was a labor of love it was kind of like apollo 13 most of the time whenever we was cutting it um, and it was also really comfortable, uh, not being in a, not having, as for me personally, uh, I, I don't know if I, I think the band could say the same thing, but not having, like, I love where we have cut our records in the past. I love, I think there's so much value in hiring a professional, but however, I do not miss the hemorrhaging feeling of spending, uh, you know, fifty, sixty dollars an hour in a studio because at a certain point it it is fun doing it, but it it really stresses you out and makes you, you know, not enjoy the moment as much as you would sometimes. Uh, and we, um, you know, recording on your own has its own set of challenges. We found out, um, and but I'm I'm 
I'm so happy that we have the workflow that we have now and I, I like to say that we have the means of production so I like to think that these next couple of years will be very uh, fruitful for us in a recording sense um, yeah what uh, I mean just kind of getting in I mean we don't have to go too far into it but what uh, what do you think is like the biggest thing you learn doing it on your own now besides mm. uh, stepping away from a studio a- aspect and because like that's a huge undertaking, especially for if you haven't really, you haven't really had a lot of experience in. No, that. yeah, that's that's true. Um, I, you know, this is our third record. Um, the first album was it was kind of a mixture, um, but it was mostly cut live with a band. Um, you know, there were a couple teams that were more, you know, tracked more with individual tracks than a live band. Um, I, uh, the second record all the cuts were cut live to analog tape um and this one was the exact same um we there's if you know if you're not in in um is musicians to know this for sure i don't know if if you know regular civilians you know if you will regular music lovers uh, appreciate this very much but there's a big difference whenever you cut an album uh to w- whether you cut it to a metronome and then you all come back individually and record your parts or whether you cut the all of the, the song together as a band live at least as much as you possibly can cut at the same time you know we weren't you know we did a, quite a few overdubs and we added on top of our record in a few places you know to say the least but um there is a really big difference in the way that a record turns out um it's a lot uh, it's a lot more sterile and it's a lot more clean on on if you cut to a click um it is you hear it maybe in a lot of rock records a lot of pop records and you know the they they'll play a they play a click track and and maybe the drummer just lays down the drums and then the bass player comes in the next day and plays the bass part to the song and you know i have a i'm a life time student of the game and student of technology and you know um, I've really been appreciating these last few years how my favorite records were made especially the ones from when technology was much more limited and um, my favorite records from Muscle Shoals or the Ray Charles records or what have you and you know right now in our technology we have so much so many capabilities of editing and yes I, I use some editing capabilities don't get me wrong don't get it twisted um uh but but really um back in the day what it was is you took the band and then you just put a bunch of microphones up to the band and then they played and then it was all mixed and uh cut into a you know the side of a record basically by the time it was done playing you know so um we didn't take quite that extreme of an approach with it as this but i really like to think in our records we like to care bring across a very lively sense and we cut with a live band and what you hear is actually our band all playing together um and what you hear the vocal track is the live vocal track with the band excuse me so um cutting the uh you know uh modern uh, a record to sit on the shelf in a and I'm, and I'm uh, in a South City house. Um, you know, it, it seemed like it'd, it'd be harder than it is. But but really, we got, you know, um, my, my good friend of mine, Nathan Hershey, he's, I played him back the tracks for the record. And, you know, he, I just said, hey, man, I just need somebody to look at this because it sounds good to me, but I'm not an expert. I'm not a studio guy. Can you just tell me what if you think this is, like, going to work, basically? And he said, oh, man how did you get such good acoustics and soundproofing? Did you build, did you do like $15,000 worth of construction to your house? Did you build a bunch of gobos? Did you use all this equipment? And I said, no, Nate Hershey, I I cut a hole in my floor and I cut with my piano in the living room while the crew was downstairs. (laughs) (laughs) So um, that's really how it all turned out. But all we did, um, not that long ago, uh, a 16 track tape machine fell into my hands from, uh, 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 my neighbor uh, down the street, Mr. Andrew Hahn and uh, Andrew Ryan and the Travelers, you know the dude. Oh, yeah. And uh, he um, kind of, we kind of 
uh, I kind of refurbished it and brought the machine back to life and just took 16 tube preamps and hit the microphone signal against against the tape and then that's kind of what you hear at the end of the day. Um, I, I it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I don't fancy myself to be the sort of dangerous kind of person in a studio like Jason McIntyre or like we have so many people that are world class in this community alone. I don't know that I th- fancy myself smart like them, but it's it's nice when it's your project. You know what sounds good to your ears, and yeah. ultimately I was able to get something that I really like. Yeah, man, I, I agree. I, I I love the way that it sounds, and uh, I just to me that's just super cool that it was all recorded right here and, and everything. So. Uh, let's uh, let's give him a little sneak peek. This is uh, "Ain't No One Got a Good Thing" track, oh, yeah. track one on the record, and uh, kicks it off. Let's uh, anything you want to share around this tune now? Yeah, tell me if you think it's a real piano or not. <laughs> no, you can uh, you can hear it. It's it's a it's alive in there, y'all. This is what. This whole record, I mean, you know, I guess any artist worth their salt, I guess, says that they're they're what they had been working on most recently is their favorite stuff. But these are some of my the best songs I ever wrote. This song in particular, I think, you know, is a lot of people can relate to. It's a you know, in in one sense, you know, I I like to sing it. It's about literally about my wife and about the thing that we got together, um, which is a really really good thing. Um, But I also like to extrapolate that thinking about my community, the incredible community that we have here in town. But see for yourself what you think out there. All right. Because this one's close to my heart, but let's see if you like it too. Here, this one right here. Ain't no one got a good thing.
Yeah, man. I, uh, like again, uh, all of this available. Uh, we do have uh, the vinyl copies uh, now on uh, Double LP Vinyl. Yes, sir. And uh, you can pick those up at uh, any of the upcoming shows, or is it on the, through the website yet? Or uh, It is not live on the internet just yet, but okay. I'm hoping to get that going before too long here. Yeah. Well, you can definitely pick it up at uh, the upcoming shows. We do have... Uh, uh, I guess the the next uh, Owl Holiday show uh, you said is kind of kind of be uh, more of a stripped down tri- yes sir tri- trio yes we're gonna be building it off our trio we are gonna be playing in Joe's Cafe but if we brought our entire band to Joe's Cafe then no, no they wouldn't let anybody in the door because nobody would be able to sit down uh, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna take this opportunity to kind of pull it back a little bit and uh, and uh, we we did a. Um, for Make Music Day last year, we did a, a trio performance at Evangeline's, and it worked out really, really well. It was it was really kind of cool um, because we could stretch out, and it was myself, our bass player Caleb, the real MVP, and uh, and Jared, our drummer. So um, we're gonna be building. We might add a few things here and there. I'm still kind of drafting what our set list looks like and what we all really want to do, but I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to play at Joe's Cafe. That's gonna be on January 17th. And there's no tickets available ahead of time for that. You just got to show up. If you know Joe's Cafe, it's a, it's just like a whole thing. You just got to show up, BYOB, bring your own snacks. It's a good time. Yeah, man. I uh, I told you I haven't been over there yet, but uh, the upcoming shows, uh, there's a lot of really good ones, and that, uh, they have my attention. So I'll definitely be uh, – not that the other ones weren't good. I just – but uh, – I had a bunch of my friends are coming up on the calendar yep. in 2019, so I'm I'm very excited about making my way over there and uh, checking it out and and stuff. So uh, we do also have another uh, um, show coming up for our holiday in the Eastside Rhythm Band on January 26th back at Off Broadway, uh, and this is a uh, autism benefit for uh, Giant Steps of St. Louis. Uh, show is called Rock the Spectrum and features. Uh, Along with Al Aldi and the Eastside Rhythm Band, you get Cree Rider, Bottoms Up Blues Gang, and School of Rock. So that's going to be a fun night, man. It's going to be a burner, y'all. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for it. It's kind of our only show over the winter and springtime. Um, and so it's going to be the only time you can, you can see us. And we're going to kind of be able to stick our head up for for one set. And we're going to, we're, we're already looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, let's, um, Let's talk a little bit about your uh, recent adventure uh, overseas and, uh, and heading over to Europe and uh, and stuff. Uh, Absolutely, man. This uh, man, like, I don't know. I just wa- looking at some of the pictures and every- and everything, and just kind of following that journey with you guys. I was like super proud and just love that you guys are representing St. Louis over there and, and doing it and uh, and everything. But uh, well, just. And give me a rundown, man. What was that like? Well, you know, this is something that I've been working towards for several years. Uh, the better part of 10 years, I, I would think, um, at this point. But, um, you know, uh, they say for uh, real American musicians that it, playing in Europe can kind of be the promised land for for artists like us, you know. Um, but but um, it's it's not so easy to get over there and it's it's not just you know that simple to to just show up and and do the thing and um i've been kind of talking to some people and doing some research as much as i can until just last year um a friend of mine david manis got back uh, from a tour over there and he just recommended me reaching out to the person that he worked with excuse me and um i sent kind of just a message in a bottle to this cat and I said, hey man, you know this is what we're about. Check out our videos, and you know we'd love to come over and do the thing. And it was several months went by, three, four months went by, and then one day I got a message back from a guy. He said, hell yeah, let's do the damn thing. <laughs> and uh, and so we just started working from there. Um, usually these tours get booked about nine to twelve months in advance, and so um, it takes quite a bit of lead time and quite a bit of work to put it all together. Um, but so. Our first tour, um, we were all across the country of Netherlands, and we were all across Germany. Um, Netherlands is, in, in Germany, the people have just been cool as hell. Um, I t- there was so much to take in from the people, but they, I, you know, they had so much hospitality. 
the people treat you so well. The audiences were so cool. Um, the people loved our music, and um, we worked like crazy for about three weeks, and then we just came back and kind of hit the ground running ever since then. But um, we played all sorts of clubs. We played clubs that hold 500 people, like state-of-the-art clubs, and uh, you know, and we played a a a a pub that's like the size of this kitchen you know <laughs> um you know we we uh, we did it we we played for all kinds of people and we had such a good time um it was really an energizing experience it was really some, it's something that we hope to build on we got an incredible response from all the people that we met um we had we had people tell us crazy stuff like people told us that like they our band was better than Ray Charles's band and all this crazy shit, which doesn't make no damn sense. I was like, all right, man, whatever, you know, but, but people like were, you know, it was to them, it was the same thing, which was crazy. Um, but, um, that's gotta feel real good though. Yeah. I mean, even to be included in that sentence, you know, like, so yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I take, I take that with a huge ass grain of salt, of course. But, um, (laughs) But it was just... It, we don't know how many of those beers they were drinking. They were they got some good beers over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but no, um, the people all just had an incredible response. Um, it was... It was... It's something I would never forget for the rest of my life, just the response people get, got yeah. to our music. So... Do you guys... Uh, do you, I mean, do you get to do uh, tour type of stuff? I mean, where was it pretty much... Uh, run from gig to gig and stuff or we didn't have once we started playing we had two days off yeah the whole time um some of the other members of the crew would get out and get a little bit more active than i would um but i would just kind of try to rest um one day i was i um i got kind of sick i got to go to the doctor and it was it was really cool actually so (laughs) me and my wife was she we we got to do her favorite thing over there we got so on our day off we got to go to the grocery store and we got to go to the pharmacy which you can get to see all the things that they have which they have a lot different stuff over there in their pharmacy yeah yeah they got it's like they have a lot of herbal stuff and i'm not talking about the weed y'all <laughs> no, i'm just like but uh they got it's they it's it's a cool thing over there man the healthcare thing they got it figured out pretty good yeah um but but they got the, the I, I highly recommend checking it out y'all did you, get, did you get to sample a lot of uh local cuisine dude man stroop waffles freaking they have really good Cheese. We had we were at this windmill one day, and I got this thing called waffle cost, which was basically this waffle that was covered in cheese. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. Um, man, they have their breakfast is really good. They um, we were eating. I didn't eat. I like. I didn't eat any junk. Like hardly the entire trip. Um, uh, but and it was really refreshing. The the food that we had off the road, like we would stop and get somewhere, some food somewhere, and it was it was just all really good. It was mm-hmm. I couldn't it it just blew my mind, man. That's a I think that'd probably be that's what I always look forward to the most with travel is just trying mm-hmm. trying something new, you know, trying some different things in the diff in uh, but uh, what do you, what do you uh, was there anything you know you you guys have gone maybe what, like a month or something a three or weeks yeah. Uh, and was there anything like particular, like you were like, man, as soon as I get home, I'm, oh, getting, Jesus. I'm getting some toasted raviolis or something. Joya's <laughs> hot salami sandwich. Yeah. I'd be dreaming about them. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about them quite a bit, but yeah. Um, and St. Louis style pizza. I definitely did not eat any Provel cheese for three <laughs> weeks and I, um, almost, it almost killed me. Um, that'll do it. Did for real. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, they, I, yeah. yeah, you are pretty uh, spoiled uh, here in the neighborhood, man. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> That's right, man. Uh, I basically eat pro cheese on a daily basis. <laughs> uh, that's going to be the name of the next record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, let's drop in another tune here for everybody. This, uh, this one uh, is called Lady on the Street. Mm-hmm. And uh, can, again, can be heard on 4963. Uh, anything uh, around this one, Al? For all my songwriting people out there, you know sometimes you write a song and it takes you 
six months or longer and it just kind of sits there and you got the right idea of it and you you know you have the idea of once the idea of the song exists the song exists and that's the hard part now finishing it out is another thing it ought, sometimes that takes a long time but from me thinking of the idea of this song and writing it it didn't take 15 minutes it was crazy every once in a while you have a song like that so anybody out there holler if you hear me let me know what you're talking about but if you, you have the same experience but uh, I, this one is one of my favorites yeah
I love hearing that kind of stuff. Like, you know, some you like just like exactly what you said. There's some people work on a song forever, and then all of a sudden, sometimes they can just it'll just pour out of you, and uh, in a couple minutes, and, yeah. and you just got to keep up. Sometimes of writing it and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I think there was like some story like uh, I forget what track it was, but it was like a Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young tune or something, and like they wrote it in studio cut it and it became like one of their biggest songs and stuff and i forget which one anyway it was just like crazy to think of that that Mm -hmm. it could happen like that Mm -hmm. like like, and it's one that's celebrated for 40 50 years now and Mm -hmm. stuff whatever so but yeah man it happens so uh but uh yeah let's uh we do uh we do have a couple other things we want to mention uh you can catch Al around town. Uh, coming up first, I guess, uh, would be the Funky Butt Fresh Travaganza on uh, right. December 14th. You'll be appearing over there Friday night off Broadway with those guys. Uh, it would, uh, how many years have you done this now with those guys? Um, this is really my third Brass Travaganza. I'm just a, I'm just a little guy when it comes to Brass <laughs> Travaganzas. This is number 10 for those guys. So yeah. it's going to be... A real good time, y'all. Yeah, if you if you don't have tickets, uh, you better hurry because there's not many left. If they are, uh, by the time this comes out, if there is anything left, I don't know. But uh, they, uh, I know uh, most of them are sold out already. So, but maybe somebody will be nice and have an extra ticket for you or something. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'm excited for that night. Uh, you do also appear, uh, which was uh, I just saw you at the uh, off Broadway when you guys got home. You're uh, your welcome home show, mm-hmm. and you guys played uh, um, Santa Claus wants some loving with uh, with your band, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that was the first time I'd seen Eastside Rhythm Band do it. But you also do that track with Funky Butt, mm-hmm. and you cut it on their uh, Christmas album that came out last year, which uh, available everywhere uh, also. Uh, so I would highly encourage anybody if you don't have that copy of that album, go pick that up because it's so much fun. Upstairs asleep. Time for old Santa Claus to make his midnight creep. Cause Santa Claus wants some loving. 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 Now I know there's something real pretty underneath that Christmas tree. I ain't have no loving in it. Some love in Now I'm trying to fix this old bicycle I can't seem to find my prize Halfway watching Mama before she gets that sleeping eye Cause Santa Claus wants some love in Santa Claus wants some love in I don't care nothing about no cake I just want you to come here, woman There are 40 children awake Cause Santa Claus wants some loving Santa Claus wants some loving Santa Claus wants some loving Here's another thing Christmas is for the children And I want them to be real pleased But right now, mama, it's Christmas tree So make that peppy happy, please Santa Claus wants some loving Santa Claus wants some love in his Yeah, baby Come on, baby You know that it's the season of giving You know there's been a lot of talk a lot of time about Santa Claus Don't believe what they tell you, y'all Oh, yeah It's going to be a brass band Coming down your chimney, y'all
There's a uh, you got you got Al on there. You got uh, Roland Johnson and Emily Wallace and Big Mike and Steve Ewing and all, all your favorite uh, St. Louis artists on there. So it's a new classic, y'all. Oh, yeah. It's a new classic. Uh, Brian Owens, I forgot that name. Yeah, he's on there too. Is good God, Brian Owens. Yeah, that man. But uh, yeah, it's a, it was that's such a fun record and. Uh, but I, I do love that Santa Claus wants some love and tune. It's uh, so much fun. Yeah, well, um, we've we've been had a lot of um, discussion around our little campfire about this. Emily was talking to me, um, um, and you know, she's like, "Baby, you need to kind of." She doesn't sound what she sounds like, but she's like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "Baby, you need to cut a Christmas record." And we were talking all about different Christmas songs. Uh, so Emily, like, you know, Emily actually, believe it or not, Emily mixed this shit. Emily mix was like the head mixing engineer on this record. Oh yeah, Emily Ligon, believe it or not, keeping she, it in the family, huh? Yeah, dude, it's like it's like um, she's not musical. She doesn't play an instrument, but she knows what sounds good. She's got good taste, and I, I mean, she married me, you know. What I'm <laughs> but uh, but to me, it reminds me of like some sort of like superhero movie or like some sort of disaster movie where all of a sudden like they bring there's like this six year old kid with uh superpowers and they bring him down to city hall to like save the city but that was like her sitting in front of the mixing council she's just like no this shit's too loud turn that shit down this isn't this you need to turn that up like but she was instrumental in mixing the record i'd gotta give a shout out to yeah my baby yeah big shout out to emily yeah dude um but anyways long story short she um we were talking about Christmas songs, but you know this this song "Santa Claus Wants Some Lovin'" falls into this other subcategory of Christmas songs. You know, we were talking about all the different the Christmas music is like a freaking canon, y'all. It's like Star Wars and Game of Thrones universe combined. There's so much stuff. There's so it's like an onion. You know what I mean? You just keep going. But uh, anyways, there's a certain subgenre that I usually don't touch, and it's called the "I'm Gonna Fuck You" Santa songs. <laughs> But but I'm not usually a fan of them. Some people they really work well with them. But Santa Claus is more it's more tasteful. You know what I'm saying? And I just really like the idea of the person who wrote the song referring to themselves in the third person as Santa Claus. It it works really well. So it's kind of it's a little out of character whenever we do it. I don't know that we have any sort of uh, songs that really match up to the I'm gonna fuck you Santa Claus <laughs> genre. But it it works. We really do like it. We've been playing it for like ten years. Uh, um, so, yeah. so check that one out, Joe. Yeah, I, that's kind. Of, I, I think that's probably why I like it as much as I do when you guys perform it, because it's something very unexpected compared mm-hmm. compared to the rest of the Al Holiday set. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you you throw in this tune, and it just I can't help but uh, smile and dance when I listen to it. And, uh, and it, plus, it's just funky, man. It's uh, so gro- it's got such a great groove to it. It and, does, man. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, there, there definitely is, uh, a lot of songs about getting freaky with Santa Claus, so it's, hey, uh, man. it's, <laughs> it's definitely something. Um, but I, no, I would love that though. I think that would be a really cool, you know, like you, obviously we, we saw a funky butt do it, do their take on a lot of mm-hmm. these and, and had, it, uh, and which was awesome. But, uh, I think an Al Holiday, uh, Holiday record, uh, would be appropriate, man. Yep, yep. Well, one day or another. I don't know. Maybe 2019. I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah. We got the means of production, y'all. There it is. And you got somebody to mix it already, so. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's give him one more. This is a song called That Bird Has Flown featuring Miss Ina Cook. She's it. bad, y'all. Oh, yeah. The woman is bad. Um... Yeah, this song, basically, it's like Ina's such a good singer, and one day it hit me like a ton of bricks, and I was like, son of a bitch, we need a song for this woman to sing in our band, and, uh, you know, we need an original song for this woman to sing, and some, I just, the song, kind of the beginning of it came to me, and we wrote it together, um, it's a lot of reflection, um, it's a lot of my interpretation, but it's also her interpretation of her. She is not from the USA. She came to the U.S. Uh, about eight years ago, maybe. And she is originally from the country of Madagascar, where she is actually 
uh, has a good amount of celebrity in that in that country because she won their very first ever singing competition like American Idol at the age of 13. So her name is a household name in the country of Madagascar. Um, and she's had a very interesting musical career coming to the U.S., um, working with bands here. And uh, But she's... Um, I, I respect that woman so much. Um, what I've been saying about her lately is that if I was ever to go out of town and needed somebody to watch my plants, I'd call Ina Cook. <laughs> but um, uh, the woman, she's great. Uh, she's killing. The song means a lot. We, we were working on it. We were working on the concept of it. And part of me was really conflicted because it was like, you know, the record is, you know, it's Al Howdy and the East Side Rhythm Band. It would be kind of strange in some respects to have a, re- uh, a song on this record that I sing no no vocals on. Um, and I, you know, had got this feeling like Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell sort of idea of what if we made it a duet right before we cut it. And that's what happened, and it turned out amazing. Um, I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. So... Check it out, y'all. It's the secret burner. It's my aunt's favorite song on the record. It's, it's. I think you're all gonna dig it. It's called "That Bird Has Flown."
Is there, uh, I know you've done uh, some work in the past. Uh, uh, Dancing Shoes Productions. Uh, oh, my boy, video. Brandon yeah. Sloan. Yeah. We go way back. Me and Brandon used to eat lunch together in high school. Oh, yeah? Nice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we go way back. Uh, but I was I was wondering if there's uh, any uh, work, you know, or any ideas being for some videos and stuff. Because there's a couple on here I think would would there's be fun to tell those stories in in a in a live you know in a visual setting like that. That is, uh, I'm so glad you said that, Shane. Um, we have been really wrestling because, like I said earlier, like they're all single, Shane Presley. Yeah. Like, they're all my babies. You know, they're all. I think they're all good like that. You know, I think of them in the way that I think that they could all deserve a music video. Mm -hmm. um, but it's we, Brandon and I have been talking back and forth recently about that about making an, a, our next music video for this. Um, for this album, uh, and that could be really good. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mean, that's. I think this. That's what's fun about this record too. Like, I mean, you, you got a songs like uh, "Wake Up America" too with uh, with Kenny, yep. where it's like, you know, s such a, a positive uh, message. I mean, and like, definitely, I think needs to be heard by everybody. Like, it's something we can all obviously need to be heard you know it's like mm -hmm. the, uh but uh so i think that something like that like that particular song could be very powerful um for everybody mm -hmm. you know and like but uh yeah i mean like it, all these are just fun and like i think it would be interesting like i said just to kind of i think some of my are there there's great st stories and could be told al along with all these songs so mm -hmm. hopefully uh i think it'd be fun to get into do, to, uh, library. I know, like the last video featured a little storyline, but it was it was also kind of a live uh, take on it too. You guys playing at the at Oyster Bar and stuff mm -hmm. and and stuff. But uh, yes, and you, we do have a video out there for any of you guys curious to see what if any of our new record on YouTube and stuff. Um, Brandon put together a great video of us, and it and it's it's live. It's us yeah. cutting Wake Up America live at my crib, um, and that's really the the visual component of sure. it. Um, but yeah, as far as the storytelling thing, I, I really love where your head's at, Shane. And I, yeah. I definitely, I didn't, I never had thought about that bird has flown, but right. dude, I think that's going to be the one. Man. Yeah, man. Like I said, you already know, you said it, but they're all, <laughs> they're all singles. I, 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 they're I, all singles, I, baby. I, I agree with you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think it'd be fun. But yeah, check out uh, the Our Holiday East Side Rhythm Band uh, YouTube channel, Facebook. Yep, and uh, our holiday music dot com for yep. for everything else. And, yep. Uh, what? Uh, I mean, we uh, obviously it's still a lot going on, but uh, you know, we we did have a great run uh, through the Netherlands and Germany and everything you said. And it, is that? Uh, yeah, I guess. And you want to do some more uh, expand on that a little bit going into the future? Absolutely. Um, you know. Um, you know, from a surely like a business perspective, if you guys are wondering, you know, what goes on in, you know, behind the scenes of, of this and, you know, the, 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 the company we're working with, the guy we're working with, um, he specializes in taking, you know, basically unknown American acts that in Europe and building them up. And, you know, ultimately he, we, the dream is to, to fly over there and play festivals play a festival run and, and build our 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 club tours um substantially um we've already really got a good foothold and i it usually takes most rock bands three tours uh, excuse me you know three three years of of building to get noticed by festivals but um we may be going back this next year to play festivals nice um so we have some people that are interested and in a few things that we may fly back in august for a shorter run of about 10 days um uh, there's a there's a um there's something in the hague that we're looking at and a couple of other things that we're putting that we're trying to put together um the castle the castle kind of work in east germany wants to i know the berlin wall is down y'all but it's in eastern germany um uh the castle would really like to have us back in August. Um, that was really cool. I'd like to invite anybody who's anybody to come to the castle with us because you can sleep as many people in it as you want because 
it's a castle. <laughs> that, that, that's what that's what that's what my that's what Jordy said to me. He, he was he, yeah, I asked him, yeah, can we fit a couple extra people in here? He said, yeah, dude, it's a castle. Um, I'm just playing, uh, but. Uh, uh, so we're looking at going back in August. We're not quite sure if that's going to happen or not um, this year, um, but we are definitely moving forward with a four-week tour in uh, around the same time, late October and into November, between Netherlands, Germany, and we're targeting in Austria and Switzerland. Do you have a, a particular piece of advice uh, for for somebody wanting to to make the trip also? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I mean, it's be persistent and um, try to talk to people um, as much as you possibly can. I, um, excuse me, um, I, I think it's really kind of different for for different uh, groups of of people. But I feel like networking is. I feel like if you go over there one time, I, I would almost wager that if somebody went over there by themselves, that they would be able to make a, a good amount of contacts. And I feel like if your music, this don't take this the wrong way, but if your music is good, it will speak to people. It will do the work for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, like, I think that everybody that I know that I would, that would ever ask me this, it's like, you're good enough, bro. Like, just do it. Just go, just go for it. And, you know, people really do like American music there. Um, if you have something that's real and that comes from your heart, people will connect with it. And um, just build on it. Just it's Rome wasn't built in a day, but that's the approach that we're taking, and I think I hope it's going to work. So yeah. Um, as far the airfare, it really isn't that bad too. That's a huge obstacle. Our budget, our expenses were like eleven thousand euros to to bring our crew over there for three weeks um and um you know we had we had a good amount of help and you know defraying those costs and covering that and everything like that we had we had a grant from the regional arts commission which was super helpful which by the way today i just heard um kevin bowers got a grant from the regional arts commission to assist him with going he just got booked at the new york winter jazz festival yeah. so i would also encourage all my local artists if you live in st louis city st louis county to reach out to the regional arts commission two times a year they offer these grants up to three thousand dollars and they offer they offer about 25 to 30 grants of that amount um so maybe you know those numbers are somewhat rough but that's the the i you know the ballpark of the whole thing um but um what I'm saying is, you know, there was seven of us, and but if you look really closely, if you fly out of Chicago and you don't really need to take a whole lot of stuff, the, the airplane tickets over there only cost about five hundred dollars. So there's a way to make it work, um, but you know, see see who's out there. Send some messages to people. Do some research, and just you know, hope for the best, um, and just don't don't give up on it yeah. because the, the opportunity is out there. My buddy, uh, Gavin M just went over there, did a run by, uh, as a solo artist. And, um, I don't know. I just imagine that's, you know, obviously it's very cool with the band too, but like just as a solo yeah. artist, him and his guitar and, oh my and, God, that... and just going, uh, you know, the networking alone and just getting to meet everybody and, uh, getting to share his stories and songs and kind of, uh, you know, essentially backpacking around and stuff, and yeah, and, I, and I'm gonna tell you all something for real. Um, there's seven people in our crew, and we were together for in a van, like really close quarters for three weeks, and like we didn't kill each other, and, <laughs> and that's and like I think that you can't really say that for uh, uh, most groups of seven people. You know what I mean? So I first of all gotta say that um, you know, big shout out to my crew. The crew was incredible. We couldn't have done this tour without the crew. Um, how to Andy Coco adjust to be Andy part. Coco is the freaking real ambassador of America. He's the he's the face of the franchise, y'all. Um, he's a he was making so many friends. He was he was it was like I'm the band dad, and he was like I he was like you know how Yadier is like a coach on the field. He was like having a second band dad on the squad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, that's all I can really say about Andy Coco. But um, he's he's a beautiful man. Um, I love that dude. Uh, but what I'm saying is that if you were to go in a one-person configuration 
uh, or a, you know, we, we took a nine seater Sprinter van, diesel, manual transmission and drove it 3000 miles. Um, but if you were just a one dude with a acoustic guitar, it would be a whole lot more logistically sound right. to get around. You know what I mean? So that would, in in some way, like I got the music that we make, we got to have our crew. I got to have my people. Sure. We wouldn't have it any other way. Don't get me wrong. But at some point it, it sounds kind of liberating to be able to roll around on public transportation or what have you. So, you know, I would encourage y'all that if they travel a little bit lighter to just, try to make something happen it's it might be a little bit easier to you because i mean my our van rental was two thousand euro for three three weeks so if, you know don't start me to talk to shane presley i'll tell you everything i know so but um some all the insider secrets something man yeah. <laughs> uh well you uh we are getting up uh, we kind of get into got into a little bit of it with uh, the funky butt fresh extravaganza coming up mm-hmm. and all this but uh getting into the holiday spirit uh do you uh, and I'm wearing uh, happy to be wearing my, one of my favorites. Uh, oh yeah, some Christmas vacation. Do you have a particular uh, favorite Christmas movie? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Is, is there anything that uh, is traditional around here? I really dig the Rudolph movie. Yeah, I really dig the Rudolph movie. Um, the, here's I got a piece of trivia for you. I don't know if you were hip to this at all yet. Um, I just found this out. This is a conspiracy theory. You ever notice? Of course, you know one of the all-time most like BA bros from the freaking Rudolph cast of characters is Yukon Cornelius. And did you ever notice how Yukon Cornelius is always licking his pickaxe whenever it comes out of the snow? I, I don't I guess I He flips that thing up there and he's yeah. like, Yeah, he pulls it out and he goes <laughs> He licks he licks it off and I'm always just like, Why the hell is he licking that thing his thing off? Oh, well, it was cut out of the original, but on the on whenever they show it now, they show it. Um, but at the end, he reveals that he wasn't looking for silver or gold. He was looking for a peppermint mine, and he found he finds it at the end of the movie, and he freaks out because he's gonna, he thinks he's going to be rich because he found like a bunch of peppermint. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. but uh, I I really dig Yukon Cornelius and the Rudolph thing. Um, you know, that's that's me personally. There's there's so much in the canon of Christmas. Um, movies that we could talk about. How about you, Shane? What you like, bro? Uh, well, I'm a big comedy fan, so yeah, like Christmas. I'm wearing Christmas Vacation oh, yeah. hoodie here. Uh, it's uh, such a fun one, and uh, so many great lines. You know, it's like even after I've watched it this many times, um, Home Alone is also oh, is, is a go-to yeah. for sure. Uh, one and two, two is also very very solid. Um, I need to get hit on yeah. two again. Yeah, uh, it. Uh, to, uh, um, when he uh, goes to like the uh, park in uh, Central Park and all that, and he's like sitting there wishing uh, for his family and all that stuff, and his mom like comes up in the in that the whole scene and everything when his, and his mom meets him at Central Park and all that, mm-hmm. and it's like, man, it's tough for me. <laughs> Water works, man. The water works, brother. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah, it's uh, it's like Kevin. You know, he's such a such a little brat, but you can't help but to love him at the whole t- at the same time. So, dude, Macaulay. Yep, he killed it. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, those uh, so I'm kind of getting I'm getting excited about uh, the holiday spirit, kind of getting uh, getting into some of that stuff. Uh, I do wish, like. Brush traffic or the that funky butt album was on more of the radio stations and on our stores and stuff because like I kind of yeah. I do get a little bit burnt out on on some, oh, on some of the music but there's this thing I've been I've realized it's like it's it's like the seventh circle of hell and it's 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 like retail Christmas music. Yeah. Purgatory and it's, man, they got some jive ass bullshit on them <laughs> Christmas music shit. On at, you're at Coles, oh hell no! All right, I worked uh, Gordman's for a couple of years working uh, holiday retail. Woo! Uh, luckily, I worked in the back, um, on just on unloading boxes and stuff, so I could we could listen to our own music back there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anytime I went on the floor, I get stuck listening to that different. Different music, and it was always the same couple of things, like on on a loop, you know. And uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I really believe uh, 
that make you go insane. Like listen to that stuff. Oh Jesus! <laughs> it's, it makes me like physically ill thinking right. about it. Um, but um, I tell you, no, it's it's a good it's a good thought though. I hear where you're. I like where your head is. As far as the yeah, that funky but Christmas records as good as any Christmas record oh, yeah. I ever heard in my life. So yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, uh, I wonder if the people uh, at the point would ever play it. You know, uh, play that. Mother freaking urge stuff, you yeah. know. Come on, man. Sugar ham, sugar ham, sugar ham, sugar ham. <laughs> is that the? I was. You said that earlier. Is that the actual words? I, it's, it's what it sounds like that Steve's saying. I don't know. Like I, I don't know what the actual lyrics. Are. If it isn't sugar ham, it should be sugar yeah. ham because I think I thought he was always saying like shake a hand, shake a hand. I think that's the original. That's my take from the Donny Hathaway lyric. Right. Um, I don't know why Donny Hathaway would be singing about sugar ham, sugar ham, but maybe... But I think Steve is, though. I think Steve, yeah, for sure. <laughs> he, uh, let's see. I'll play it for you, and we'll get... We'll, right, right in, everybody. What do you think this sounds like? We'll get all kinds of... Uh, that, would be, uh, that would be congruent with the Funky Butt um, love for yeah. ham Santas. But... Um, here we go. Skip forward a bit here. I think it's... Christmas and 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 Christmas Y'all, Steve Ewing sounds so good. Right here. I'll be damned if he ain't saying sugar hams. <laughs> so do y'all know about the ham of the brass extravaganza? <laughs> That's the only reason I think I can win it because I think I know how those guys are. I know exactly how those guys are for sure. I guarantee you that's what they're saying. I'll have to we'll have to do a little bit more uh, yeah. uh, behind the music with those guys on the sugar hams uh, situation. But um, and if it's not sugar ham, it should be. It should be. Uh, yeah. Well, they they Adam. I'm fairly certain that Adam brings a ham to every brass extravaganza, and they they throw ham to the audience into people's <laughs> mouth. And uh, I remember the first year I did it, I was hanging out with Bob Bennett, um, and Bob dresses in the most luxurious suit, and he uh, is a very luxurious person, and he was telling me all about the ham Santas. Um, And a ham Santa, what is a ham Santa, you ask? Well, it's one of the most delicious things you could ever put in your mouth. (laughs) It's, um, it's, so, Bob is also a, he, he likes his bourbon, but he probably he knows even more about donuts. I believe he'll tell you where all the different donuts are in St. Louis. He say these are the best donuts, the best glazed donuts that keep the longest are this part of the city. The best blueberry ones are old fashioned donuts, so on and so forth. Um, but so he brings in donuts every year, and somehow in the Brass Travaganza tradition, they invented a food product called a ham Santa, and it is a bunch of glazed ham stuck between two donuts in a sandwich and it's really good y'all hmm i'll have to try ham santa man <laughs> sounds pretty tasty i'm always up for uh you know some uh some new ideas so to check that out uh but yeah big shout out to funky butt brass those guys are the best um so yeah i don't know i just i listen at all uh, the whole record today and i just kept thinking that sounds like he's saying sugar ham so it is it's got to be uh but yeah man uh so again get involved with all things all holiday in the east side rhythm band again pick up a copy of 4963 wherever you get your music but uh we definitely want to encourage you to pick up a copy on double lp vinyl uh make a great uh holiday gift uh fit nicely under the tree this year and or you can uh, pick up the CD copy; they'll fit in the stocking. So, 
Uh, but we do have uh, again. Oh, we haven't got to talk, talk about it, but we do have another. So we got the the funky butt. You're uh, playing on the, on December fourteenth, and then the return of Southern Exposure, December twenty second. Yeah, at Broadway Oyster Bar. One time, y'all. One time, one night only. We coming. We getting back together. Um, those guys are all cool as hell, and yeah. we're gonna do it one time with the Mighty Pines crew plus the the international man of mystery, Mr. Charlie Serpa. <laughs> Um, and you know it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing. So we're gonna be doing it. It's just a couple days. It's a Saturday before Christmas. You know you can't stand your family. Just come on down and hang out with us at the Oyster Bar. It's gonna be good. Yeah, I uh, yeah I love this band and all the tunes you guys play. It's a, it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, really, uh, and if you haven't seen uh, Southern Exposure, it's definitely uh, a ton of New Orleans type of uh, kind of music. Um, so everything. It's very appropriate at a Worcester bar. You come down there and get yourself uh, some uh, some crawfish, or crab legs, and enjoy uh, mm. some, or jambalaya. All my favorites down there. Those enchiladas, man, so good. Uh, but yeah, come on out to Broadway Oyster Bar December 22nd for that show, and then uh, again uh, Joe's Cafe January 17th, and Off Broadway January 26th. Uh, Rock the Spectrum with Cree Rider, Bottoms of Blues Gang, and School of Rock. So, a lot of big things happening for our holiday in Eastside Rhythm Band. Still, we have, like I said, 2018's been a great year. Uh, I'm excited to see what's next for the for you guys. So Can't wait, man. Yeah, man. Well, I thank you so much, Al, for doing this, uh, taking some time out to hang. Dude, and thanks so much, Shane. Thanks, everybody listening. I, uh, and, uh, Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Emily. Uh, she she's not here today, but uh, thanks for always being awesome. She uh, I really like uh, getting to see her around at all the shows, and she always always makes me smile. She's a, a babe, man. Yeah. She's a babe, one hundred percent. But yeah, man. Thanks, Al. I'll see you soon, buddy. All right, man. Bye, everyone. Bye. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.